Skull and Bones is due to release on the 8th of November 2022 and so far we have got some important information on various different aspects of the game. Today we're going to go through all that information to make you ready for the release of Skull and Bones. But before we get into the video I just want to tell you guys about something a dear friend of mine has been working on. You may already know him as George97 or the guy who actually owns this channel. I am, I am the one that's running it. Anyway, he is running a 50 minute free training session where he goes through how to start a gaming channel and how to grow a gaming channel. It's a free YouTube training session directed at gamers who are looking to monetize their passion. So if you like to play a game like FIFA, GTA, Red Dead, whatever, and you want to get earn money from playing these games, then this is perfect. As I already said, Jamie is the creator behind Joe's 97 and Food Fanatic, and is also the owner of Luxan and this channel Open Vision. However, I run Open Vision, but he's the owner of it. So as you can see, he has gotten a lot of channels monetized and very quickly. If you guys are interested in this free 50 minute training session with Jamie, I will link it in the description as well as in the pinned comment in the comments. So head over there and make your boy Jamie happy. Anyway, let's get back into the video. Since we all know Skull and Bones is a pirate game, you spend the most of your time on the ocean. That means a big question is which ocean or which sea are you roaming? Well, in Skull and Bones, you are roaming in the Indian Ocean. So this is the ocean outside of India, of course, and close to Africa. So in the game, you can travel from the coast of Africa to the East Indies all the way over the ocean. And there will be many different stuff in between. I will talk about that later. But also it has changing weather so you can get into a storm can get into good weather you can get into just rain if if we want to compare it to something we could compare it to sea of thieves where it's changing what weather there too because you can get into a storm in sea of thieves i would think it's something similar to that anyway now we got where we are so what do we do there's actually no story or main campaign to say it with Ubisoft's own words, there's no one path to follow, there's no one way to play. So you can actually play however you'd like. There's no main campaign like what usually is with Ubisoft's game. It's more of you create your own story with building up your crew, doing contracts and getting your infamy up. I will talk about all this later, don't worry. But there's no main story or campaign. So if you want a story game, this is not for you. In this game, you will also need food, ammunition, you will need to hunt, and you will need to gather resources. These are just a few of the things you will have to do when starting the game. After a while, I will think you can automate this, kind of automate this with making your crew do stuff like hunting and maybe gathering resources. But right at the beginning, at least, you have to do it yourself. You have to hunt to get food. You can also buy food at different outposts. And you also need to gather resources through different stuff uh, as uh, crafting. And you also have to gather some resources to craft different items and upgrades to your ship or your person or whatever. And when we're talking about food, let's just get over to morale. Because there is a morale system with your crew's uh, morale on your ship in this game. So you will need to have your ship crew's morale to be up because or else your own crew can get annoyed with you and actually throw you overboard or just rally against you. This you of course don't want, so to keep your crew happy and well, you will need to provide food for them. This is where the food plays a part. I'm also guessing that you need food for yourself as maybe a healing or something like that. I'm not sure yet. But what is for sure is that your crew needs it. If you don't supply food for them and don't keep them happy, they will go against you and your ship will not function properly. Talking about getting food, let's get over to survival. Because survival is a pretty big thing in Skull and Bones. If we compare it to a game like Sea of Thieves, where the survival aspect is not really there, and I'm not talking about ship battles and that you need to gather food as well in Sea of Thieves, because that's not like surviving in the wild, that's just fighting. But in Skull and Bones, food and resources are essential. They are essential to keep your crew's morale high and also to craft better items. And talking about crafting, crafting is a very, very important aspect of 
skull and bones to craft new items guns ships you will need to get blueprints and then also the right resources to craft better ships and weapons and armor and much more therefore as i talked about earlier gathering resources will play a very big part because to upgrade your ship or upgrade your weapons you will need to craft it i have not seen yet that you can buy new ships or buy new weapons we will have to wait for that but as of right now it seems like you have to craft everything you upgrade so resources will most likely play a big part of skull and bones now let's get over to the pirate dens and outposts so at the pirate dens these are the bigger versions of the outposts the outposts are a bit smaller the people on there will move i will mention that later but the pirate dens are a bit bigger and has more activities and stuff to do so on pirate dens you can craft this is where you craft new ships new equipment everything like that that is what you do on pirate dens you can also buy food for going out sailing as i said earlier you do really need this because if you don't have food for your crew they will get really really mad you can also take on contracts and contracts i'm guessing this is something similar to what we have in sea of thieves with voyages if you've ever played sea of thieves voyages are basically missions that you go out you need to for example uh, dig up some treasure on a few islands and then get back and sell it i don't think it will be exactly the same but i'm thinking this contract stuff will be kind of the same you get a contract you go out you do that mission you go back or you don't even have to go back but anyway I, i'm guessing it's that and also on pirate dance you can meet other players other real players and socialize with them Outposts are a bit smaller and they are also a bit different from pirate dens. There will be traveling merchants and smugglers on the outposts that have uh, contracts and missions. But these guys will move around on different outposts. So the difference here is that you can only access these contracts and missions for a short period of time before they then move to another outpost. The people on the pirate dens will never move. They will always stay in one place on that specific pirate den but the people on the outposts will move around as the time progresses the time period will probably be a few hours or so so after maybe six hours they will move another place six hours they will move another place etc that is just an example though i am not sure on the time frame <sighs> anyway here we have a big part of the game and this is infamy infamy is the reputation system in skull and bones when your infamy rises you will get more and better opportunities to earn more money and even more infamy as i mentioned earlier contracts will be one of these ways of earning infamy and becoming a bigger pirate contracts are deals and missions you can take from other pirates also called npcs around the world or on pirate dens and outposts Contracts are deals and missions you can take from other pirates, also called NPCs, around the world. I believe these pirates that give you contracts like this will be on both pirate dens and on outposts. But on outposts, they will move, of course. You will also gain infamy by completing activities such as exploration, plundering, treasure hunts, investigations, dynamic events, and much more. These will probably give you less infamy since they seem like smaller kind of side quests instead of the contracts, which seems like they are the big thing. Onto something that you guys have probably been waiting for the whole video, and this is the ships. In Skull and Bones, there are several different ships, all with different features and flaws. Some of the ships are cargo ship, navigation ship, and firepower ship. With all these ships you can craft better and stronger weapons as well as armor with different counters. One armor can do good against normal cannons while it could do very badly against fireballs. It could all depend on the armor you have and what weapon is shooting at you. I will make a more in-depth guide on the ships in this game though because it is a very big part of the game. I have just scratched the surface here with the ships. There's much more to talk about the ships. So stay tuned for that video. That's about all the essential information you need about Skull and Bones if you're planning to play it like me. Also, let me know what you think of Skull and Bones finally releasing. Are you going to buy it? Or are you going to hold off and wait until it is on discount somewhere? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this awesome video. And if so, go downstairs and throw that like button into the wall so it turns blue. Anger is not the way of the jet. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. That's all for today. I'll see you next week, lads. Farewell.